G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory with an update on how I am a born again astrophotographer. A born again astrophotographer, of course, is someone who has found a new church, which is functionally exactly the same as the old church, but they just won't shut up about it. And also, speaking in tongues. In this episode, I continue to set up the spaceship in my backyard with a new brain, a little mini PC, and Nina. I'll give you a quick rundown of how you can get going in Nina with a super quick overview of its sexy features. But as a bonus, I'll be showing you how to set up a custom horizon, both in Nina and your planetarium software like Stellarium. So your neighbors annoying trees can live rent free in your software as data points. Join me as we take these steps together to become better astrophotographers and to level up our game by looking away from the world's problems, looking way, way away. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Before we get going, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's show, High Point Scientific, my old friends in America who can sell you anything to do with space. They don't have any brand in particular that they push and they have a price match guarantee and they fully support the stuff they sell. So be sure to check out their website here and tell them I sent you. That's www.highpointscientific.com. Okay, now why would you want a custom horizon in your planetarium or Nina software? Your planetarium is set up so that it can see the whole sky, but in the real world, you can't see the whole sky. There are trees in the way. There is your house in the way. There is your neighbor's annoying light down the street. There's all sorts of stuff that may be in the way of you taking a clear shot of the sky. You can actually plan for this. You can see when things will clear those points in your backyard, or you can just stand around like I do in the backyard and point your planetarium software to the sky and just see what's up. But if you want to forward plan these things, it's always good to know whether things will be visible or not from your particular vantage point. So the first step is to download a surveying app. These are called Theodolites, which I think is an actual instrument that used to do this, but essentially we just want the azimuth and the altitude of where things are clear in your backyard. There are free ones available for both iOS and Google Android. So I'm using this app here, which cost me 14 whole dollars, but I'm an Apple user, so. I'm rich, yeah! you can get free versions of these. It just may mean that in the next step, you will have to manually write down those numbers. Uh, the app that I downloaded has an auto log feature where it will just keep logging the point every one second and I can export that file and not have to write anything out. So that saved me minutes of my life. <laughs> step two is to get into the point where your telescope is or very near where your telescope is going to be and aim your camera at the sky and record those data points. Okay, you can see here, all we need to do is trace around here. Uh, in the log button here, you can add data point manually or this one has a auto logger. So I can go auto logging every one second and it will just take a point every one second. And I just trace around my clear sky and my roof and all of that, that I can dump out all of those data points. And we're done. For the next step, we want to generate this kind of file. All it is, is the azimuth degrees on one column and then a space and then the altitude degrees on the next column. So if you're using a free app, you may have to manually write these down and then just save that file as horizon.txt. Okay, the setup in Nina is super easy. All you have to do is go into options and then into general. You click this icon here to find the file and just connect it to your horizon.txt file that you set up before. I've done a pretty high res one, so I went through and did lots and lots of points. Once you've done that, if you go to the Sky Atlas and search for a target, uh, it will show you 
your horizon right in the planner here. And I just discovered if you get rid of the target completely and do a blank search, it will show you a whole number of other targets that it knows will actually clear your horizon, uh, which I think is great. This seems like a little hidden gem. And of course, in the sequencer itself, as you're imaging, it will show you the graph here with your horizon. So I can see here my roof, I can see the street line, and I can see my neighbor's trees. And just by looking at this graph in the sequencer itself, I can see that it will start clearing my roof at about eight, nine o'clock, and then I'm ready to image. Easy. Okay, now the easiest way to set up Stellarium is to just download this landscape file, link in the description, and uh, install a new landscape from the zip archive. Just install this zip and it'll have the minimum files that you need to get going. And really all you need to do is just dump your data points, the horizon.txt file, in that folder that it creates in Stellarium. And then you can make changes to the landscape.ini file or make your own custom PNG with a transparent sky so that you can set up your own backyard as well. You might have to adjust the landscape.ini angle uh, just to make sure that the custom landscape that you create lines up with all the data points on your custom horizon. Mine's pretty sloppy, especially because I have a 360 in a very small backyard, so things are quite distorted. Uh, but yeah, just play with it and see how you go. This landscape zip should be a good starting point anyway. <laughs> Okay, we are in Nina. Uh, first step is going to be to connect the dome here in the dome section. Oh, it's already connected, so I'll just open. Now, I haven't used um, Nina with a tutorial or a manual, or I haven't even watched a YouTube video about it. So I'm just bumbling my way through, and it seems pretty intuitive so far. Telescope, I'll connect that now, and that opens up EQ mod, I'll unpark the scope, I'll set the sidereal tracking rate, sidereal, uh, you'll see my <laughs> observatory is flashing like a disco dome and that is because uh, I have a time lapse going on in there, that's the iPhone's LiDAR doing that, would you believe, that gets picked up. Okay, we minimize it out of EQ mod, what else do I need to connect? Um, I need to connect the camera. These notifications just um, don't go away, so you find yourself swatting away the notifications all the time. Turn the camera cooler on. What else do I have? The guiding is ready to go. I don't think it's dark enough for guiding it, but we'll see. Connect to the guide camera and the mount. That's all going. Yep. And focuser. I think that's all I need for the moment. Uh, so if we go Sky Atlas, I type in M42 because that's an easy uh, thing to search for and it's up right now. You can see here how our horizon is working. You can see that green line there shows, basically shows my house and the trees behind the observatory and I can see over all of that and through all of that to the north so that's looking good uh, and it tells us that uh, it will be peaking at 67 degrees north probably in a couple of hours or an hour and a half um, so we can say add target to sequence or we can go to the framing assistant here uh, and I kind of like the running man so I'll pull this over to the running man here um, now I, I do need to determine the rotation from the camera because it hasn't plate solved or figured out what my camera's rotation is so this square here isn't correct just yet and if it was dark enough I could hit this determine ro rotation from camera I'll go to add target to sequence simple sequencer here we can say we want a total of 40 subs I want them at three minutes their lights I don't have my automatic I don't have an automatic filter wheel here bidding one by one dither on and it's pretty much ready to go 20 minutes later okay sorry about that it took me a while to find focus and it's a bit darker now so we are in focus i've got a new image train set up with just a bit better back focal distance there let's try that determine rotation from camera see if it fixes how this frame is oriented so it's doing a plate solve now plate solving 
that was quick uh, let's do slew and center now so that should slew the telescope and plate solve it exactly to get to the target which is really handy let's add it to the simple sequencer ah. <laughs> my PhD is not uh, in focus I gotta go fix my off, off axis guider here All right, there we have it. The first image from the newly configured observatory. Uh, first light was technically last night when I was getting all of this set up, but this is the best one because I've fixed the back focal stuff so that the stars are better in the corner. Uh, that's another nice little feature that Nina has to test the corners there. So little seagulls here. Looks like a bit of a jump maybe during the guiding, maybe that point there. But overall, cracking image. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to keep acquiring. I'm going to stack this out later, see how it turns out. Well, that's better than a poke in the bum with a burnt stick. I mean, it's not much, but it's mine. And the observatory is back online again, and Nina is working. I am extremely thrilled to be back online. Thanks for all your support and your kind comments on last week's video. We are doing well. Uh, it really touched me in a uh, special place. Uh, whether you're new to this channel and you're a new astrophotographer and astronomer, and all of this is new to you, or you are uh, an experienced old hand at this stuff, but you got some little nugget of wisdom within this video. That's what this channel is all about. And if all goes to plan, I'll be back again doing this. So learn with me in real time while I learn for you and make all the mistakes so that you don't have to. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.